So in my previous video, I changed a Lego car into an RC car. And actually, it wasn't as fast as I thought it would be. But how fast was it? This is something I wanted to know, so I decided to create a timing system so I can run the same race over and over again and get a time from that. And then I can change things. I can see if I can make it faster or slower or if it stayed the same. So here's how I did that. Okay, so here's my vision of how this timing system might work. Have a start line and a finish line and a car that would go from that start line to the finish line, similar to a drag race. And to show that time, we would record it and display it on some type of display here so you can know how fast it was. A little more detail on how we'll actually do this. Uh, for the start line, we'll have an IR LED and an IR sensor. And that's going to create a light beam through them that once this car breaks that, would cause the timer to start. And for the finish line, we do the same with an IR LED and IR sensor. So to get that signal from here to the LCD display, we'd have to connect some type of signal line to a controller on both of those sensors. And then that controller will then tell the LCD what to display and the time. And that's how the system will work on a very basic level. So I do want to go on a side tangent at this point. Um, I'm using an Arduino for this project, and Arduino is a really nice uh, microcontroller that has an entire community built around building code and making projects out of this microcontroller. So for this project, I actually ended up using the code that was almost identical to a stopwatch. So a stopwatch that used a stop and start button to display a time on a screen. That was very close to what I wanted to do, so I grabbed that open source code and modified it a little bit to just replace the buttons with the sensors here. So from a coding perspective, it was great that that was already there that I could take and modify. So here's the mock-up of the infrared timing system. I can go over some of the basic components here. On the right, we have an Arduino Uno. This is the logic controller that's going to control everything. Have an LCD screen right here and a dimmer switch to control that. Here we have an infrared LED that would shoot a beam over to this <clears throat> infrared receiver that would act as our start line. And then here there's another infrared LED that would shoot a signal to this infrared receiver acting as our finish line. Now let's uh, turn it on and see how it functions. So at the top here, you can see what's marked as the start line. There's a beam connecting here. If an object breaks that beam or a race car, that will cause this timer to start. And as the race car goes down the track and breaks the second beam at the bottom, it would cause that timer to finish. So now that this concept works, we just need to make it bigger, make it wider so that a car can go through here and make it longer so that we can have a, a decent racetrack and we'll have to figure out some way to do remote power and send that signal back and forth. One of the next steps here is going to be seeing how far this LED can shoot to this receiver and still make a connection. So we'll be testing that on this piece of aluminum here and see how far apart we can get that. So here I have two different LED sizes. This one here is a smaller three millimeter diameter and this one here is a larger five millimeter diameter. We will compare both these and see how the results are. Okay, now the LEDs are hooked up. We will hook up another receiver. All right, now I've got a setup here to test how far these IR LEDs can be received by this receiver. I have the tape measure here across the bottom. I'm basically gonna slide this away and see how far it can be received. And for reference, the car that would need to go through this IR beam is about 200 millimeters wide. 
So these LEDs are directional, so you have to hold the indicator in the correct spot, otherwise you will lose the signal. Later when we get these mounted up on some sort of mounting platform, we can align those better. So let's start with the large LED here, see how far the LED can reach for that one. So 100 is no problem, 200 also no problem, 300 still okay. We get more out of it, up to 400, still connected, and 450. So let's test the range on the small LED, see how far it can be connected. So here's 100 millimeters, no problem. 200 millimeters, no problem. 300 millimeters, still okay and 400 millimeters. So a car should have no problem to go through that distance. So now I'll get things uh, soldered up on this piece of aluminum and we can see we can fine tune it to 450 or more. And the reason I chose this piece of aluminum is because it's very thin. So I can solder the sensors on both ends. And as my car goes down the track, it can still roll over it with no, no issues. So we'll see how that works. All right, as you can see here, I have the two pieces of, of aluminum now with the LEDs and the sensors soldered on them. Each of them are powered with a nine volt battery. So you can see what happens when I hook that up. So there's two LEDs under here. When the light beam is broken, one of them will turn off showing that it's been triggered same with the finish line, you'll get that effect as well. All that's left to do is hook these up to the Arduino, get the LCD screen working, and work out how far of a distance I can put these apart. And finally, put a, a card on the racetrack. Okay, now we've got everything hooked up here. have the Arduino and the LCD screen here, using a power bank as a power source, and have the start line and finish line connected to the Arduino. So you can see there's a whole mess of wires back there. It's about three meters worth and it still works all right. So here's a little demonstration of how it works. Throw this ball across the start and finish line. All right, the timing system's in place for the first run. We're gonna try and use the big green crazy. Ready, set, go. Two point one two seconds. It works.